All right, let's continue with <coughs> shear stress uh, VQ over IT. So let's look at this and let's plot the intensity of the shear stress uh, distributed over the cross section of the strut if it is subjected to a shear force of 600 kilonewtons. All right. So we know that the tau is VQ over IT, uh, but at different locations, right, the Q and the T are different. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to plot, um, I, I want to look at it at, at a few important <coughs> locations, like maybe the very top. Let's see what it's doing kind of right above and right below where this uh, top flange uh, starts. Um, and maybe at the middle. I think that'll be enough um, to uh, plot the intensity of the shear stress. So uh, <coughs> before I get too far, uh, let me find the I. So for this shape, I think it's easiest to do 1 12th of the whole rectangle and minus these two rectangles right here. So 1 12th, uh, let's see, 300 height 210 cubed minus 1 12th, uh, 100 height of 150 cubed, and there are two of those. So I've got the I <coughs> of uh, 1.75 times 10 to the 8, uh, and everything was in millimeters, that's in millimeters to the 4th. All right, so that's the eye for the whole shape. That's the eye no matter whether I'm looking at the very top, middle, bottom, wherever. All right, <clears throat> so let's look at the very top. Tau, VQ over IT. Uh, but remember, at the very, very top and the very, very bottom at zero, um, and mathematically that's true because inside of this Q, Q is Y bar prime, A prime. The A prime is the area past your point, the area away from the neutral axis, <coughs> and that, that would be zero. So the shear stress at the very top would be zero. All right, so how about we look now <coughs> at, um, it's gonna kind of change right here where this top piece changes. Uh, so I'm going to look at both <coughs> right above and right below uh, where this top part uh, meets right here. So let's do right above so this would be <coughs> right above top Flange, we'll call it uh, VQ <coughs> over IT. All right, the V, 600 kilonewtons. <coughs> I'm going to do 600,000 newtons. The Q. All right, so Q is Y, prime, y bar prime A prime. Uh, y bar prime, I'm going to come back to the A prime would be the area <coughs> away from this. So this would be a 30 by 300. <coughs> so this would be 300 by 30. All those are millimeters. And now the <coughs> Y bar prime is not the distance to the point. The distance to the point would just be 75. But I need to go to the centroid of the A prime. So I would go 75 <coughs> plus another 15. So my Y bar prime would be 90. Got that? All right, then the I, 1.75 times 10 to the 8 millimeters to the 4th. All this is millimeters, 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 newtons. <coughs> and then the thickness, all right, so above right here, the thickness would be 300. All right, above right here, <coughs> the thick, thick, thickness would be 300. So this would be 9.24 megapascals, 9.24 MPa. Now, there's 
I'm not going to say positive or negative. Uh, if the V is down, then all of this shear stress is down. Everywhere it's down. It's down here, here, here. It's, it's down. Okay, so let's do right below that point. VQ over IT. Uh, let's think about this. Uh, everything stays the same. 600,000, 90, 330. I I'm basically at the same point, so I'm not changing the <coughs> Y prime or A prime. Uh, but here I am changing the thickness, T. I am changing thickness, T. <coughs> How does that change this? The shear stress would be 27.7 MPA. So it's like this immediate jump of thicknesses and so an immediate jump of shear stress. Alright, then let's look at the middle. Alright, the middle. <clears throat> Let me see if I have room for this. Would be V, 600,000 newtons. Q. Alright, so this one, if we're looking at the middle, I think it makes most sense to do the Q. We talked about this <clears throat> of that A prime and that A prime. The <coughs> the A prime above the middle part would look like a T. So I could, if I don't want to find the centroid of that T, because Y bar prime is from the neutral axis to the centroid of A prime, if I don't want to do a centroid of a T, I can just break it up into Y bar prime A prime of the blue rectangle plus Y bar prime A prime of the pink rectangle. <coughs> so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, y bar prime, A prime of the blue. So let me do the A prime of the blue. It's 100 by oops, 75. Oops. <coughs> 100 by 75. And then the Y bar prime would be from the neutral axis to the centroid of that would be 37.5. All right. <coughs> And then the pink, I kind of already did that. Uh, the area would be 300 by 30, and the Y bar prime would be 90 to get to the centroid of that A prime. So just add those Y bar prime A primes up. <clears throat> that would be the Q at the middle. The I, 1.75 times 10 to the 8. The thickness of the middle, 100. So this would be 37.36 MPA. Thirty-seven point three six MPA. Now, <clears throat> if I kept on doing this, because the shape is symmetric, um, the tau would be symmetric. I would get twenty-seven point seven <clears throat> down here, nine point two four down there, and zero, of course. <coughs> down there. <clears throat> Alright, so let's kind of <clears throat> plot uh, what this looks like over that shape. So let's look at the very top, very bottom, starts at zero, ends at zero. Now, <clears throat> if this was a solid rectangle, <clears throat> this would look like a parabola, maximum right here. Uh, and so this <clears throat> Q right here has this kind of shape, uh, but for us, um, it does this shape. Well, it doesn't really flatten out just yet. Now, it does this shape until it gets to uh, right here. So, at, uh, so let's say this is a 210 tall. Oh. <clears throat> Sorry, um, at let's see, one eighty 
Um, and then this one would be 75, 105 would be the middle, uh, and this would be 30. Uh, so at this top flange, um, it goes from 9.24, so this, let's say this is the tau, this is the height, h. It goes from 9.24 immediately, we're assuming, <coughs> immediately to this 27.7 MPA. Um, then <coughs> it still is getting <coughs> larger to uh, the maximum 37.36. Um, and so that's what the distribution would look like. Uh, <coughs> like I said, normally it's par parabolic, <coughs> but when you have this, these changes in thickness right here, um, we've got an, an immediate. <coughs> so um, if, if I'm asking for a point, you know, point A right here, I'm going to need to specify, hey, is that right above <coughs> or right below? Uh, where that thickness uh, changes, where that thickness changes. <clears throat> but <clears throat> I could ask you, and you can calculate any point now. Now we know any point. Hey, what's the stress at that point right there? What's the stress at that point? What's the stress at that point? <clears throat> Remember, it doesn't matter across. It's uniform across. So it doesn't matter whether, whether I'm asking at that location or that location. <clears throat> but it changes <clears throat> top to bottom. Changes top to top bottom. Tau, VQ over IT, finding that Q. Q is Y bar prime, A prime. Finding that Q is the hardest part. 